No matter how untalented you think you might be, everybody's got a hidden talent that the rest of the world doesn't see very often. That almost rhymed, but I ruined it. It's also not uncommon for famous people who are famous for singing or acting to have other secret talents as well. Right now, I'm counting down the top 10 celebrities that have weird hidden talents you never knew about here for you on IO. What is gravy, y'all? This is IO. I'm Charlotte. Thank you so much for checking out another one of our videos. If you're new here, it's our job to tell you about what's trending. So subscribe and turn on the bell so you never miss a video and you're the first to know what's trending. And before I get into this video, I want you to tell me in the comments about a weird hidden talent that you have. What is my hidden talent, you ask? Well, <laughs> I'll just tell you. I have a few hidden talents that a lot of people don't know about, but I guess the one that most people don't know about is I paint. If you watch my personal channel, you've seen my paintings in my house tour, so if you want to see my paintings, check out my house tour on my personal channel. And make sure you tell me about your hidden talents down below in the comments. Okay, let's start off this list at number 10 with Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie is a very talented actress and she's also tried her hand at directing. She wears many hats, as they say. But did you know that Angelina Jolie has a pilot's license and she even owns two planes? It's a little known fact that Angelina started flying planes in 2004 because of her son Maddox's interest in planes. Maddox was only three at the time and he was just obsessed with planes, like most little boys are. I feel like little boys love like planes and trains and like policemen and firemen. So Angelina took up flying basically to impress her kid, which is like mom goals, big mom energy over here. The tail number on her plane contained the letters MX in honor of her son. At 16 year old, Maddox took up flying himself and Angelina Jolie also then got her husband, Brad Pitt, into it as well. Angelina also showed off her flying skills in the David Attenborough documentary, The Queen's Green Planet where Angelina can be seen co-piloting a plane over the Nambian desert. Here is a clip of her landing that plane. At number nine on this list, we have Heidi Klum. Heidi Klum is not just a top supermodel and host of America's Got Talent. She's actually got a pretty weird talent herself. She's a yodeler. <laughs> She yodels. Kind of a random talent, to be honest. Yodeling is not a skill that like most people, I feel like would learn. But also let's not forget that Heidi is German. Yodeling is a form of singing that's done by many cultures worldwide. But it's traditionally associated with people from the Central Alps who yodeled to call their stock or communicate with the other Alpine villages. The earliest record of a yodel was from 1545, and it's still considered a major feature of folk music in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Heidi Klum showed off her yodeling skills on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Unfortunately, we can't show the clip because it'll probably get this whole video copyright claimed, but let me tell you, it's a weird yodel. Like, it's really like high pitched, and I always thought yodeling was like yodeling, like it's like super low, like alto. But the way that Heidi Klum sings it, it just sort of sounds like she's like a chipmunk, like a yodeling hamster or something. <laughs> Anyways, I'll leave a link down below in the comments for you guys if you want to check that out. So it's weird. I learned something today. At number eight, we have Justin Bieber. Have you guys ever solved a Rubik's Cube? I've never been able to, honestly. I've tried and then I give up after about 30 seconds. For those that don't know, Rubik's Cubes are 3D combination puzzles. Originally called the Magic Cube, they are also widely considered to be the best-selling toy of all time. The aim of the puzzle is to make sure that all sides of the Rubik's Cube have all one color on them, and you do that by twisting and turning the little, like, rows of squares until all, all of the squares are the same color on every single side of the square. It's a very difficult puzzle, but Justin Bieber has proved time and time again that he can solve a Rubik's Cube in under two minutes. In some cases, he solved it in under 90 seconds. He's also weirdly seen holding Rubik's Cubes all the time. Like the paparazzi always catch him and he's holding like a Rubik's Cube. While most of us hold our phones, Justin Bieber holds a Rubik's Cube and honestly, what am I doing with my life? At number seven, we have Flava Flav. Flava Flav is more famous for being a reality TV personality and hype man than anything else. You know that Flava Flav was part of the rap group Public Enemy. At this point, he's pretty much just become a meme. But did you know that Flava Flav is a music prodigy? Yeah, man. Flava Flav is not just a hype man. He's legit a very talented musician. Not even an exaggeration. And I have so much respect for him now that after I've learned this. I did have res respect for him before, but I mean, it's just, it's weird how his public persona has painted him as like this jester, like just kind of like this funny guy. But in reality, he was the only person, a uh, part of Public Enemy that knew about music theory. Flava Flav taught himself how to play piano at age five. He mastered the piano, drums, and guitar at an early age. Apparently he knows how to play 15 different instruments in total. Hard to believe that he was Chuck D's sidekick and not the other way around. 
At number six, Jessica Chastain. Jessica Chastain has to be one of my favorite actresses, not just because she's ginger and I'm biased, but also because she's great. But apart from being an Academy Award winning actress, Jessica Chastain is fluent in sign language. There was even this one time that she was caught on camera communicating with a fan in sign language who wanted her autograph after one of her performances in a Broadway show. Jessica learned sign language several years ago in 2011 when she was on set shooting the film Take Shelter. She learned to communicate with her co-star and on-screen daughter, Tova Stewardham, who is deaf. When the cameras weren't rolling, she was always practicing sign language with Tova. At number five, Christopher Walken. Before he became one of the most recognizable actors in Hollywood, Christopher Walken was a lion tamer. Christopher's mother was a Scottish immigrant from Glasgow who wanted her children to be famous, so he's been working in show business since a young age. He worked odd jobs when he was young, and one of these jobs when he was 16 years old was a lion tamer. The head tamer of the circus cast him in an elaborate act where Walken played his son and apprentice. They wore matching costumes and performed with over a dozen lions. After the show was over, Walken would stay on stage with an old lioness named Sheba. Walken described Sheba as a very sweet lion, kind of like a dog, who would run and sit up and roll over when he would instruct her to do so. At number four on our list, we have Jamie Lee Curtis. A ton of us have side hustles. It's not uncommon in a gig economy. Many people work freelance in this economy. But have you ever expected Jamie Lee Curtis to have a side hustle? Not really, especially not a side hustle like the one I'm about to tell you. Jamie Lee Curtis has a side hustle as an inventor. She has several patents registered in her name. Jamie was inspired to invent a special diaper after she was changing her daughter's diaper and she was far away from the wipes. Thought to herself, I want to invent a diaper that has wipes built into the diaper. So she invented this diaper called Diapen Wipe. <laughs> I'm not even lying. Diapen Wipe. <laughs> you can't get Diapen Wipe right now. She wanted to find a way to create the product while being biodegradable. And apparently Dipe and Wipe was patented all the way back in 1987. And it's like, I want a Dipe and Wipe. Like I don't even have a child, but I want a Dipe and Wipe. At number three, Jack White. Back in the early days of Jack White's career in Detroit, he reupholstered furniture as a side job. Jack White worked at a furniture place called Third Man Upholstery. Its slogan was, your furniture is not dead. The amazing thing about Jack White's furniture was he would hide little messages on the wood frame. Messages to other upholsterers. Upholsterers are the only people who would ever see these messages because they're the only people that actually take apart the furniture to reupholster it. So apparently it's this thing for upholsterers to like leave little messages to each other inside furniture. <laughs> Jack White was also in a band called The Upholsterers and on the 25th anniversary of his shop, they made 100 pieces of vinyl and then they stuffed the vinyl records into furniture and then upholstered it. You could only get to one of these records if you ripped the furniture apart. To this day, there are 100 pieces of furniture that contain these records from Jack White's band, The Upholsterers. No one's found a record yet. And honestly, I have a feeling that it could be years or they'll never find it, frankly. I'm assuming that people who'd own this furniture would probably just throw it away. At number two, we have Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon is not just an activist and one of the most iconic actresses in Hollywood. She's really friggin' good at ping pong. She loves it. She's like a ping pong advocate. I had no idea until I was researching this video, but Susan Sarandon owns a chain of ping pong bars and clubs called Spin. I go to Spin quite a lot and I had no idea that Susan Sarandon was the person behind it. Susan Sarandon co-owns all Spin locations in Toronto, Milwaukee, and Los Angeles. She founded Spin in 2009 with her then boyfriend, Jonathan Bricklin. She got involved after attending a tennis table party. Can you imagine that convo? Like Susan Sarandon's like really, really drunk and playing ping pong. She's like, you know what guys? You know what would be great? We should make a bar where people play ping pong. And at number one on our list, we have Mike Tyson. Former world heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson loves pigeons. He's got a thing for pigeons. Not that kind of thing, get your mind out of it. Mike Tyson has a strong relationship with pigeons and it started at a young age. He's like a pigeon whisperer. When Mike Tyson was bullied as a kid, he found comfort in his pet pigeons. It turns out that pigeons are actually what led Mike Tyson to boxing. It was over a pigeon that Mike Tyson threw his first punch. One of his bullies from when he was a kid actually killed one of his pet pigeons in front of him and I guess he threw a punch and then started boxing shortly after that. The rage over the pigeons, I swear to God. Mike went on to win Olympic gold at 20 years old and became the youngest heavyweight champion in the history of boxing. He's still got a thing for pigeons. Apparently he's got like 70 of them at his house in a pigeon coop. 
that he and his family take care of every day. He's explained in interviews that pigeons keep him grounded and in tune with nature and have even helped him make a comeback later in life. All right, there you have it, guys. I had a lot of fun researching this video. I love finding out about people's hidden talents because everybody has one. Everybody's got, you know, like a little hobby or a little interest that no one else knows about. Make sure you tell me about your hidden talents down below in the comments. For now, I'm gonna quickly wrap this one up with some comment replies. Damon Puss said, love you, I.O., but I don't believe you read every comment. I do read every comment that I see. I think I read probably about 70%, 60%, 70%. Tracy McBride said, I'm new to IO. This is one impressed older lady. I watch tons of content and Charlotte handles this with pure class. Other channels low ground with the issue. Rock on Charlotte, I'm a new subscriber now. Thanks. The cook is shook said, you guys make me so happy. I lost one of my pets a few days ago, aw. And you guys keep my head up, thank you. If you aren't subscribed to them, subscribe. Well, I'm so sorry to hear about your pet, but thank you so much for being a subscriber and for watching our videos and liking them. I really appreciate it. That is it for me and thanks for watching. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want more of our videos and I will see you guys next time.